a judge late today denying another attempt by Trump's lawyers to just run away from this thing. Indeed, the judge admonished Trump's lawyers uh, for insinuating that actress Stormy Daniel has changed her story while rejecting their mistrial request. The judge said, I disagree with your narrative that there's any new account here. That was in the explanation for saying your motion for a mistrial is denied. Daniel's wrapping up her testimony. She spoke under oath for hours and basically rhetorically stood her ground during the reports we have. Remember, we don't have the cameras, but we have a lot of reporting and people inside the room that it got very tense with the questioning from Trump's defense lawyers. All of this about trying to make a bet that the jury wouldn't be as offended by some of the line of questioning as they would be concerned about the potential questions raised on her credibility. You wanted money. That phrase repeated multiple times by Donald Trump's lawyer today as she grilled Stormy Daniels during cross-examination. It bordered on Susan Necklace, I think, shaming a sex worker. So of course, uh, Stormy Daniels getting the most attention. You see Donald Trump, I think that it is his motivation to really shame this woman, and it's not working. It felt like something that might have happened three de decades ago. She was not going to let, you know, her story be mischaracterized. Um, very impressive. So that's this clash today. And because Donald Trump is, of course, running for president and because the country can take this in, there are many layers to this. But the first and most important legal layer is whether this will work on the jury or backfire. Then we can also have, of course, at the same time, the wider discussion about what you heard legal experts there describe as misogyny and out of date and antiquated. But the first thing is, is any of this helping Donald Trump's defense with the jury? Is it a wash or might it even backfire? Because one of the things here was trying to frame Daniel's history in a very certain way. They asked Daniels pointedly, you made all this up. And she said, no. They tried to say it was all about money. And she said, no, I never asked for money from anyone in particular. I asked for money to tell my story. Again, that's a distinction between this allegation of extortion. Did she just want money for no reason? Or did she have something that had essentially market value? We know the tabloids thought it had market value. During one heated interaction, Daniel said to Trump's lawyer, you're putting words in my mouth. So that was the tone. And while you might say, OK, all's fair in a courtroom, this is definitely uh, more tense back and forth than we have seen on many other days. The defense did get Daniels to concede that she did not have a firsthand knowledge of how Trump's role evolved in paying the money in the transaction. That's because it was sort of at this distance through the intermediary lawyers. So Trump's lawyer asked Daniels, you have no personal knowledge about his involvement in that financial transaction, do you? And she's under oath, and she said not directly, no. The prosecution also came back at Daniels, because that's how it works when you go back and forth, and they asked if publicly telling the truth about Trump has been a net positive or net negative for her? Now, that's a straightforward question, and given what she's been through, this is her view under oath. You could mark it by what she's been through publicly, attacks, personal security, money she now owes pursuant to all this, and Avenatti's representation of her. So I will tell you, as an observer reporting on all this, I think her answer that you see on the screen is credible. She said it has been a net negative. The point being that if the main attack on her is that she had this job history and she did all this to get money or improve her life, well, by her statement under oath and a lot of other indicators, it did not improve her life. Now, many court reporters and legal experts say Daniels basically had a good day today, although, again, the question for the jury is how this all plays out. And she could comport herself well, but if the Trump defense team basically added doubt to a couple of jurors, even by a very old or unfair playbook, well, that's going to be tested in this trial. Now, we could see her leaving court today. Her attorney also spoke to NBC after the testimony, saying it was an excellent job of responding directly, simply and thoroughly, and the lawyer saying he's proud of how she conducted herself. And now, when you look at the broader context and why today was so tense, we, we have reason to believe she may ultimately be the only woman who has this encounter history with Donald Trump that the jury will hear from. Trump's lawyer said today that the other person in this sort of situation who was part of the catch and kill payments, Karen McDougal, former Playboy model, who said her story was bought by the Inquirer and then silenced, that she will not be testifying. After Daniels, prosecutors also today called a bookkeeper. Now, this is a big deal from the Trump board because there's all the financials. And there you got this testimony that Trump and his now convicted top money man, Alan Weisselberg, the CFO, were talking daily. 
That corroborates the point that Trump was involved in these things. If one of the defenses, as I've told you, is busy president, lots going on, wasn't involved, well, the problem for Donald Trump is that the paperwork and his own aides, these are not critics, his own aides, his own Trump org financial staff say, actually, even while president, he was this involved. Now, prosecutors will continue to hone in on this because they want to show that this wasn't some after-the-fact thing, that the plan all along with these checks you see was an illegal, off-the-books reimbursement of Michael Cohen, and that Trump was in on it. Now, Trump's former White House assistant, who was the gatekeeper of the Oval Office, will be testifying. She also worked at the RNC, discussing on the stand that the release of the Access Hollywood tape rattled the leadership. Also testimony about internal conversations about it got so bad that they were looking at replacing Trump as a candidate if it came to that. Now, that matters because, again, a jury that's looking at a former president thinks, well, he won. The point here in the campaign crime theory is this was how close he was to not only losing, but maybe not even being allowed to finish the race if the RNC pulled him off the ballots. Now, Trump's team has downplayed this. They say there's always some event that causes total consternation for a couple days. And she did agree with that and confirm the prosecution to the prosecution that Trump met with Cohen at the White House in 2017. There was an email on that. Now, Michael Cohen has described the meeting as a time where they discussed this very secret hush money and the repayment, which, again, we now know, according to the books, looks like it was a lie. Now, this witness testified that she does still think highly of Trump. And, like others, we actually saw her get emotional on the stand, according to reporters inside the room. The defense sees that as potentially humanizing her. So what you see here is what we've told you would happen in the way this case will evolve. You get some exciting testimony, some human moments, whether they're for or against the defendant. We saw that emotional testimony from someone that the jury might sympathize with. We also saw Stormy Daniels go clashing very directly with Trump's lawyers. And then you have all the paperwork and the receipts, which on the one hand is admittedly boring. It's definitely boring as compared to discussions of intimate details or someone's history in the adult film industry. Uh, but the DA's team here is hoping to do something methodical, to combine the human and the emotional and the memorable with the rote and the written and the boring, so that by the end they can say to the jury, this wasn't about just shaming this defendant and candidate or making him look bad or overdoing it against him. All these things were necessary to show that both crimes, according to the DA, occurred. 